My name is Nicholas, and this is the story of the magical brocade. For those who aren't aware of what a brocade is, it is a tapestry woven in the image of either a person or landscape. In China, there lived an old widow who lived with her only son, Chen. She was known all over the land for her beautifully crafted brocades made of gold, silver, and colored silk. One day, she just finished selling all of her brocades, and with the money, decided she would look around the market to see if there's anything she'd like. She happened to come across a beautiful scroll of a palace with marvelous gardens, and in them were the loveliest maidens. She couldn't help but spend almost all of her money on this scroll, and return home to show her son, Chen. Even Chen was amazed at the sheer beauty of the scroll and told his mom that she should make a brocade of the very scroll. Excited, the widow agreed and instantly began weaving the very image on the scroll. Days, weeks, and even months went by. Without eating or sleeping, the widow worked so hard on this brocade, and when she finished it, she lay on the floor crying in happiness that she had finished the scroll. Though the happiness was not there for very long, because just as Chen and her were admiring its beauty, a wind swept through the cottage, picked up the scroll, and whipped it out the window to the east. Instantly, Chen's mother's health declined, for she needed the scroll to have any kind of happiness. So, Chen set out to the east to find the scroll and make his mom better. As in his travels, he came across a hut, and on the hut's porch sat an old woman who had seen the very brocade fly to the east, but she warned Chen that she thinks that it may have traveled all the way to the Sun Palace, and that no mortal has ever traveled to the palace. If he was to travel, he could take her horse, but he was warned that if he was to make a single complaint in his travels, that he would never return. Without a choice, he jumped on the horse and set east. The first obstacle he came across was a fire, was a mountain of fire. And as if the horse knew exactly where it was going, galloped up the mountain, and with each stride, Fire swept across his legs, but he did not groan at once. Fearing for the worst as he entered, as he went down the slope, he lifted his leg and surprisingly found that he had no burns. The horse continued on to a sea of ice. Once again, as if the horse knew exactly what it was doing, he galloped from ice flow to ice flow, but with each jump came an icy wave of water that would soak Chen to the bone and chill him. However, when he got across the sea, he was dry to the touch and warm. Finally, he approached the Sun Palace, jumped off his horse, ran up the steps, and opened the doors. In this great hall that the doors opened to sat dozens of fairies, all working on looms, to recreate the very brocade that the old woman had made, sitting in the center of the great hall. One fairy approached him, astonished that a mortal has ever made it to the Sun Palace, asked him what he was doing here. He told this fairy that he was here to get his mother's brocade back, and that she needed it to survive. He, she asked him that they keep the brocade for the night so they can finish the replications and that he can take it in the morning. While Chen slept that night, that fairy took the old widow's brocade and wove an image of herself on the steps of the Sun Palace, whispered, it, whispered an enchantment, and walked away. The next morning, Chen grabbed the scroll got on the horse, and ran back to the old woman's hut. At the hut, with the old woman astonished to see him make it back alive, 
gave him shoes that could make him run faster than he possibly could imagine so he can get home to his mom as fast as possible. He put on these shoes and in one, two, three steps he was already home. He ran through the doors and to his, and to his mother's surprise gave the brocade back to her. She was instantly feeling better. Color came back to her face and her health was at its peak. Suddenly, another wind swept through the cottage and the brocade was broken from the grasp. They both ran outside as if to grab the, scr and as if to grab the brocade before it was swept from the grasp again. But instead, when they got outside, the brocade was merely hanging in the air, just floating there. They approached it, and as they did it, the brocade grew larger and larger and larger until it covered their entire view. Standing on the steps of, this pic of the brocade was the fairy, waving at them, gesturing at them to enter the brocade. They both entered the brocade, though they were very curious as to how this was happening. They entered the brocade and found themselves standing in front of the Sun Palace. The fairy asked that the old widow stay and teach them the art of weaving the brocade she makes with the very beauty that she has. The old widow agreed, but only if Chen did as well. Excited, he agreed. And so to that day, the old widow and Chen lived at the Sun Palace where she taught the fairies how to weave brocades just as she does. And they say that only the finest brocades come from the Sun Palace.